Hello, it's Godspeed with Daniel. In just a few moments, the online prosperity show is going to begin. We're going to be talking about how alpha man and alpha men can get all the answers they've been looking for directly from God and the creator of the universe. Here we go. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the creator of the God Walk Up, Daniel himself. Daniel, how are you doing, my man? Doing great. Fantastic. I really appreciate having you on the call today because your story and your experience has so much value for a lot of people. And in case, um, you know, people are meeting you for the first time now, Daniel's story started off in 2008 when the real estate crash, um, you know, came in and he lost just about everything. But he redeemed himself, even though he turned to drinking and he lost everything that he had, the toys, the money and the custody of his children. After he actually got sober, he started back into business and jumped into the mortgage um, you know, business. He also had a bit of massive success there. He became a coach. He started training people using lead generation and sales strategies, which obviously most of us are working on to create businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. But one thing was happening. Daniel was not fulfilled. He actually felt empty. And we're going to be diving deep into all of this because some people think that we, um, you know, when we aspire to have it all, we are actually going to be happy, but that might not be the case. So Daniel actually started then um, the Walking with God um, walks that he now is going to also tell us about. And he got really connected to the creator himself and he was able to get direct downloads and instructions from God and what to do next with his um you know with his life and that's when he then created um you know the God walks with Daniel I know I'm going to be mincing my words in trying to um cramp all your history here but since you're here you might as well tell us a little bit about everything that I've just sort of mentioned in your own words, who is Daniel and why should anybody yeah. care? Yeah. Well, you know, my story kind of starts just like a lot of people's story did, especially in the U S back in 2008, you know, the real estate market changed, changed overnight. I was making all of this money. You know, we had marketing on lock. We had more business coming in than I knew what to do with. I um I lived in a home that uh, the neighbors they would they would ask me where my parents were and I was like no 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 I I own the house <laughs> and uh, you know I was I, I was definitely successful when it when it comes to making money back then and you know the the real estate market flipped upside down and I I lost everything just like you said turned to drinking you know she left with the kids foreclosure bankruptcy repossession all of it happened and um, I was literally on my dad's couch trying to figure life out. Um, that was the only place I could go. And I was drinking every single morning, every single night I would drink when I woke up and I would drink until I passed out for two years. It was horrible. Wow. And I mean, looking at you now, your old feet and drinking healthy drinks, that's a very long journey from maybe the person that we didn't meet who was Daniel there. Now you started off wealthy. Okay, you started off well, which is not what a lot of people have. And then you went rock bottom and then you built yourself up again. Can you just walk us through the, first of all, mindset that goes through that ebb and flow, which a lot of people might um, not understand, um, you know, how somebody can literally go down in their dumps and, and build themselves back up again? Yeah, I think it's a great question. I've always been able to make money, always, um, my whole life. That's just been something that that I was born with was that entrepreneurship. I've always wanted to work for myself. I've always wanted to create for myself. I, I am not a good employee. <laughs> when someone tries to tell me what to do, I, I don't listen. I just don't. You know, it's just I know me. I was 13 years old, had my first lawn service. I was cutting and mowing lawns. So I've always had success. And um, 
when I lost the real estate business, it wasn't because I didn't have the ability to make money or didn't know how to figure it out. I just chose not to. It was like, it was so easy for so long. I got into this groove to where it was like, okay, now I'm going to have to reinvent my real estate and mortgage business to be able to succeed. And I don't want to do that. I'm just going to drink. I'm going to lose everything and I'm going to drink. And that's literally the decision that I made. It was horrible. Um, and it was one morning I literally, and this is, this was, this is what happened for me. I was six hours of sleeping. I wake up. It's, it's kind of early in the morning and I walk out in the backyard of my dad's house and God speaks to me. It was like a burning bush opportunity for me or situation. He starts speaking to me and he said, son, you're done drinking. And I'm like, okay, who's this voice? What is going on? I've never heard this voice like this before. It was booming. It was loud. It was strong. Yet it was calming. I felt calm. So as he's telling me this, I'm, I'm having a conversation with God in my dad's backyard. I wasn't sober, but it was six hours of sleeping and I hadn't started drinking yet. So that was the best moment that, that, you know, I believe he had with me <laughs> to be able to hear this. He said, you're done drinking. Um, did you not drink again? And that was the only like part of the conversation that, that, that I had with him was, okay, well, what does this mean? He says, you're done drinking. Don't ever drink again. And that was literally July 7, 2010. I haven't had a drink since. My life has changed exponentially because of this, this one decision that I made to, to listen to God. Things have gotten amazing since then. Oh, congratulations, man. And um, obviously, at the end of the day, this is more of a success story than all the successes that you ever had because you came full circle. Now, there's one thing that you mentioned, which... Um, you know, um, is much of a soundbite than anything else. The effect of knowing yourself, okay, knowing what you're capable of, knowing what you're not capable of, and you use that to your advantage because you knew exactly who you were and, um, you know, how to bounce sort of back. Can you just walk us through how important that aspect in and of itself is, firstly, for yourself? And for maybe the the listener who's who's sitting here, how knowing yourself, um, you know, can actually help yeah. you with business or life. Yeah, absolutely. The, the The one thing that people need to focus on is what they want. That's the first thing to understand this concept is focus on what you want, not not what you need. I need to pay the bills. That's the worst thing you could ever say. Focus on what you want. Of course, you're going to pay the bills if you focus on what you want, if it's bigger than your bills. If you just want to focus on just paying your bills, that's all you're going to be able to do the whole your whole life, and you're going to struggle. I've always focused on what I wanted. So when I was 13 years old, literally, my dad, we moved into this big yard, big, big house with this big yard with a creek in the backyard, and there was a riding lawnmower in the shed. He pulls a riding lawnmower out, and I'm like, this is the coolest thing ever. I can literally like start this thing and drive it around. I'm 13, you know, like this is my first like car. <laughs> Wasn't a car, it was a lawnmower, but that's what I did. I started cutting the grass and my dad would pay me $2 every time I cut the grass. Now this was like cheap labor. This is like, like I could sue my dad right now because it was like serious work for $2, right? <laughs> so I'm like, well, let me think here for a second. Now let me focus on what I want. I, I want more money and I like cutting grass. At that point, that was my mindset. Now, this was in between baseball and everything else. I was playing five sports at the time year round. So like I was really busy, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get some more jobs. If I get some more jobs, I can charge him more than $2. I can charge him like 20 bucks. I can charge him 40 bucks. Like these yards are huge. So that's what I did. And then I realized like I was making money and no one was telling me what to do or when to do it or how to do it. I mean, within reason, I couldn't like, you know, cut, cut the grass and, and and kill it. Like I had to do a good job. But other than that, like, I literally had my own business and I realized right then, like, I want to be my own business owner. I can't work for anyone. Like if someone tells me what to do, like I said earlier, like I, I, I can't do it. I just can't. So I've always been an entrepreneur. I've always owned and, and ran and operated my own business. And that's, what's been really powerful for me because I know like, that's what I want. Fantastic. And um, it's proof positive that, you know, there's a statement, I think it was uh, Jim Rohn that mentioned that from 16 to 65, you can 
earn a wage, but from zero to 99, you can earn a profit. And obviously you are within that sort of space where you literally decided that this was going to be the way to go. Now, talking about decisions, you also make decisions to maybe start drinking and you made a decision to stop drinking and you made a decision to listen to that voice. Can you walk us through why decisions are a crucial um, you know, factor in making the men or, you know, so many people are not making really, really big decisions in their lives. And maybe that's why their lives are not turning out to what they want. How yeah. has the ability to make those crucial decisions in your life changed um, you? And how can they change the people that are listening to the show right now? Yeah, well, evidence will stack on on top of itself if you look for it, like it's evidence. So the decisions that you make, the choices that you make will leave clues that every single decision that you make will leave a clue, at least one. So if it's a good decision, it will leave good clues. If it's a bad decision, it will leave bad clues. It was very, very obvious that I was making bad decisions when I was drinking from morning until passing out at night. It was very obvious. I had no money. I had no time with my kids. I had no car. I had no motorcycles. I had no, none of the toys that I used to have. I didn't have a house. Didn't even have a bedroom. You know, I didn't have my own bath. I didn't have anything. Like we have all these things these days. And then this is where I was. I had nothing. So I remember going, how do, how do I stop? Like, I got to stop. I don't really, I need help stopping. Like I was addicted to alcohol, right? Well, those decisions really put me in a bad situation. So the moment that like, there was a reason for me to stop drinking the creator of, of my life, and the creator of the world is literally having a conversation with me. And I know it's him. It's not my own head. It's him. I know it is. Then the decision was I'm going to listen. And from that point, that decision that I made has catapulted my life to, to a point to where there's not enough time on the show to explain like how great things have been just because of that one decision getting clear. I was drinking because I didn't want to feel, I wanted to be numb. I didn't want to feel the pain. Like a lot of people drink to, to, to have a good time. I did not drink to have a good time. I drank so I wouldn't have a time at all. I wouldn't feel. I wanted to literally, you know, go into a state of not knowing what was going on and, and, and being completely numb. So decisions are very important and, and always a good decision or a bad decision is going to leave a clue. When you look at the clues and you stack up that evidence and you can decide, you know, which way do you want to go? Do you want to make a good decision or you want to make a bad decision? Absolutely. And I really like the way you've, um, you know, turned yourself around. And it was through the uh, making of all these decisions, because as you say, success leaves clues. And, um, you know, you decided to, um, you know, follow through with what you were hearing, especially in the voices um, you know, that started coming to you. Now, people might just be thinking, come on, Daniel, was there, was it not just voices in your head because you were drinking um, that started coming to you when you heard that voice on the 7th of July in 2010 uh, to tell you to stop drinking? What was going on, you know, like in your head? Were you scared? Were you excited? Were you were you receptive to that voice or were you just like, nah, it ain't all that? Um, how, how, how can you walk us through what was going on with you then? Yeah, I was, I was frightened and calm at the same time. It was the weirdest thing I've ever been involved in. I was like, what is this booming voice? What, what is this? It's God. Like, I just knew it in my heart. It was God. He like spoke directly to me. I knew without a shadow of a doubt it was God. And when I chose and when I leaned into this and I started talking back to this voice, the voice kept talking back to me. We were having a conversation back and forth. When this conversation was going back, he didn't say very much other than you're done drinking. Do not drink ever again. Like that was literally, it just kept, it kept pounding that to me. I'd ask him, well, how am I going to stop drinking? See, at the time, I wasn't able to stop drinking. I tried to stop drinking, not just for those two years. I was drinking and partying the whole time I was making money. I was an alcoholic. It was real simple. You know, I would party when I'd have success. I would party when I didn't have success. I would party when I closed all the deals and I would party when I didn't close all the deals. So there was like no, there was just an excuse to drink. And then I would drink and I would drink too much. 
So I always was trying to stop. When I really knew that it was a voice that wasn't my voice when it was God's voice that morning, I'm listening to this voice. And as a result of me listening to that voice, it, it's not even a hard thing. I don't want to drink. A lot of people drink and it's cool when people drink. I just know I can't drink like other people can. And I don't want to. It's that simple. You just don't want to. I don't want it. I stay close to God and God just changed something in my body. I don't want to drink anymore. That's how simple the conversation was. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, that's such a remarkable, um, you know, story right there. You know, having the actual voice, um, you know, of God talking to you and you actually taking action on it. And then you just started walking about. All right. Was what, yeah. what was happening then in your life? Yeah. So as a result of, of, of not drinking and actually like being coherent, and not numb every single day, I started making some money. I got my own place. I got my kids back. You know, I, I got relationships in my life back. People started to trust me. I got cars. I built up a very successful mortgage business. Again, I started like from scratch back in 2011 and 12. And I built this thing up to, to a point to where the owner of the mortgage company offered me an ownership position. He said, look, I don't want you to go anywhere. You, you've closed so much revenue, way more than anybody has in the company. And this company at that time was in eight states. It's a pretty large mortgage company. They said, we, we're going to make you an owner. And in return, you're not going to leave. And I'm like, well, I'm looking at the money. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to leave. I'll stay. I'm not going to go work anybody or anywhere else. So I had a lot of success. And it was the seventh day of the month. And this is where everything changed for me forever. Like I'm having the success. I got the kids. I got the cars. I got the toys, the motorcycles, the boats, the RVs. Like I got everything. I got the houses. I have my own branch of a mortgage company, my own building, like the whole top floor of a building. Everyone's working for me. Like it's perfect. Like I don't have to listen to anybody. Just like I told you, like I'm the boss, right? And this is how I want it. I'm having massive success. It's the seventh day of the month. It's about 5.30 in the morning. I'm in the office before anybody. That's just how I roll. So I'm there early in the morning. I'm looking at my computer. There's $131,000 that was deposited into my account yesterday on the 6th. And I'm like, okay, well, this was, wow. That was good for six days worth of, of commissions. Like, it's a great start to the month. I'm looking at the rest of the calendar. I'm like, I will definitely make $300,000 this month in the mortgage business. I had other businesses and other coaching businesses running at the same time too. So like I was going to have a, a really good month, mega month. And then all of a sudden I start feeling myself selling myself on feeling good. And I'm like, okay, what the hell is going on right now? Like, why do I feel bad? Why do I not feel good? Kids are happy. Relationships are happy. Body is happy. I haven't drank in a long time. Everyone is happy. I have a bunch of money. I have a bunch more coming in and this isn't like a one hit wonder thing. Like it's like revolving. It just keeps coming. I, I started praying to God. I'm like, God, I know there's something wrong. Tell me what's going on. Like I have all of this money and I feel like crap. There's like a hole in my chest. Why do I feel like this? He started speaking to me. He said, son, you're done doing mortgages. <laughs> I'm like, all right. That's the same voice that I heard that said, you're done drinking. Don't drink again. Same voice, same God, same voice, same feeling. So he tells me you're done doing mortgages. And I said, God, uh, I don't know if you know this, but I'm pretty good at this. Um, one of the best I've ever met. <laughs> like, I'm making some serious money and I've got a lot more lined up. You know, that you saw like my bank account. I'm sure you can see that like, I'm pretty good at this. And he's like, you're done doing mortgages. So I'm having a conversation pacing in my office back and forth, just with me and God, no one's in the office yet. Right. And this conversation lasted for, for a while. And it, it wasn't very, um, there wasn't a lot of information. It was the same conversation that I had about the drinking thing. It was just a couple of points that he was making, regardless of how I reworded questions. He just kept giving me the same answer. He's like, you're done doing mortgages. And I'm like, why am I done doing mortgages? He goes, you understand how you feel right now. You don't feel good, even though you're good at it. And I'm like, yeah. He goes, that's because you're not supposed to be doing mortgages anymore. You feel this way on purpose. I made you feel this way. 
I'm like, okay, so what am I supposed to do? He's you're done doing mortgages. That's what you're supposed to do. I'm like, okay. So then the, the, my staff and, and my team and, and everybody start filing in for the day. And so the connection was lost and I stopped talking to God at that point that morning. And I just kind of went along my day, but here's what was different. The rest of the day, I was on sales calls, selling mortgages. I couldn't, no one said yes. Everyone <laughs> kept saying no to me. I'm like, no one says no to me. What is going on? Day two goes by. Everyone is saying no to me. I haven't sold a mortgage in like a day and a half. Now, with the revenue that I was making, like I was selling mortgages daily. People were saying yes and signing contracts and loan applications with me on a daily basis. It's a day and a half, everyone's saying no. And no one says no. It's like four or four or five people in a row, day and a half. No, we're going to go somewhere else. I'm like, what do you mean go somewhere else? Like, I've, I've never heard this before. And I start hearing it again. Day three, I'm hearing no's again. I haven't sold a mortgage yet. I'm like, okay, this is really, really odd. So I have an appointment at the chiropractor. I get a adjustment on my back once a week. So I go to the uh, chiropractor. I'm in the waiting room. And I hear God. He says, delete your database. And I'm like, okay. What do you mean delete my database? Now I know you and, and I know with the marketing and everything that you do and you teach, you know how powerful a database is, right? Please tell that's, me like how powerful the, is your database to you? That's my whole business. That's everything I own. You know <laughs> what I mean? That's my link yeah. to whatever money that is is that I'm entitled to. So if somebody tells me to delete yeah. my database, yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's something else. What did you do? <laughs> well, I sat there for a second and I'm like, uh, what do you mean delete my database? Delete your database. You're done doing mortgages. I told you this three days ago. How long do you want to play this game? You haven't been able to sell a mortgage since I told you you were done, right? I'm like, holy shit. Okay. I'm going to delete my database. He's like, yeah, you're going to delete your database. Like, this is the conversation we're having. I'm like talking out loud. Obviously, no one else can hear God, but I can in my head as I'm talking out loud. People think I'm probably crazy. I don't care at this point. I'm in the waiting room at the chiropractor's office. I have tech that's very high level. On my phone, I have the ability to delete my database. So I literally log into my system. I delete my database. I go to the trash folder. I delete the database. I just did it because he told me to. I know this voice. And when this voice tells me to do something, I, I act. I, I ask a couple of questions. I mean, because it's a pretty heavy decision to make, but I acted. I deleted the database. Then they call me back for my adjustment. So I'm, I'm walking into the back. I lay on the table and I'm like erect. Like my whole body is like straight. And the and the chiropractor, who's the same guy who's been working on me for a while, he's like, uh, you have a lot of stress. I can tell. Like your body doesn't feel the same. I'm like, if you only knew what just happened in your waiting room. And he's like, what happened? I'm like, I, I, we don't have enough time to talk about this. So I did the adjustment or he did the adjustment. I walk out. I feel a little better, but then the fear kind of sets in. Then I go back to the mortgage business or my mortgage office. And I'm like, well, I've got no leads. I've got no database. Um, the team's going to start asking questions, and I am just don't even know what to tell them. So I started going to work in my mortgage office with talking with God and asking him strategically what to do. What am I supposed to do about my financial purpose? Because I know this is a purpose problem now. I've never had a problem with making money, ever. There was a couple of years where I wasn't making money, but that was because I was drunk the whole two years. It wasn't because of anything else. It wasn't an ability thing. It was a decision thing. So I'm like, okay, well, I know that I can make money. I can generate a lot of money. Like that's just, I've done it in different industries over and over for years. What is my purpose? What am I supposed to do, God, for you? Like where, why am I on this earth? That's the kind of conversations I started having. Then out of necessity, these conversations got loud and I'm like, I, I can't have these conversations in my office anymore. I got to like go on a walk. So that's where the God walk actually came to fruition. It was out of a need, like a healthy fear that I had. Like, what am I supposed to do with my life? So I started walking at the park. I don't go to the park. <laughs> you know? I'm not a park guy. I started going to the park and I started asking God, what am I supposed to do with my financial purpose? Where am I supposed to focus on my financial purpose? I started asking about my body and health. What am I supposed to do with my body and health? 
what am I supposed to do about my relationships? Like I started asking him everything, but I was very strategic. That is something I've always been is very strategic on every move that I make. If I'm strategic, then I, I can, I can control the outcome. So as I'm talking with God, like I bring that mindset in with it and I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask specific questions. I know if I ask specific questions, I'll get specific answers. And I started doing that and I developed this flow to where now every single morning when I wake up, first thing is I check in with God and I walk with God and I ask him what I'm supposed to do for the day. I ask him what I'm supposed to focus on and, and give me directions on my financial purpose for the day, on my body and health and for my relationships. And as a result of that, my life is better than I could have ever imagined in all areas of my life. There's not one area that, that I feel is lacking. That's what's happened to me. That's how the, the God walk app and the God walk actually came, you know, to life was because it, it happened in my own life. Fantastic, man. While you're talking about that, I just remember the meme that um, was going on on social media saying the statue or the sculpture is inside the rock. So everything that you were deleting, that you were being told to take off was shaping the man that you have become today. And that's a really remarkable, um, you know, way of looking at it that, you know, the the God we serve is is a God of um, giving, but also he tell, tells you what to eliminate and take off in order to drive you towards exactly what you think um, you need to be, um, you know, going towards. Now, obviously, this might just be sounding like a story to somebody who's listening. What what have you now done with all these conversations that you're having, um, you know, with God, with all this direction, all these downloads that you're having? What 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 has come out of it? Yeah. So a lot of people think that, you know, you make some big move like this, like stop a mortgage business, close it down, close down, a you know, a seven figure business. Like, you know, you're going to have to be in lack or you're going to have to like cut some corners or, you know, a coaching Listen, business that you talked about. I know <laughs> I mean, it's gone. And then you would think, okay, well, you know, you're going to have to like, I, I deleted my my database on my coaching site too. I used to coach lead gen and, and sales for realtors because I was in the real estate business. I like I knew how to do it. That's why I was so good. I was I, I deleted that too. I was done with that. I was making money that same month he told me to delete. So everyone's like going, okay, how are you going to make money? How are you going to do this? How are you going to do that? I'm like, God's going to tell me exactly how to do it. And he did. Um, I was as a result of these decisions. It wasn't that I was taking away stuff. I've actually, I live in a beautiful place in Florida now, right by the beach. Like literally I can go out my balcony and look at the ocean and then look at the intercoastal. Like I'm right in the middle of it. It's amazing. I, I ride a Harley. I have a street bike. I have, you know, trucks, cars. I've got a McLaren. I've got race cars. Like I've got all this stuff as a result of following exactly what God has told me to do strategically. So the evidence of of me walking with God, if you were to meet me even four months ago to now, you wouldn't recognize me because I operate in God speed. I don't operate in human speed. Everyone usually operates in human speed. And that's where I was until I understood the power behind having God direct every single step that you take. Like there's a lot of coaches out there that people need to hire. There's a lot of programs out there that people need to to purchase. Like me, I have teams I have people that that help me and I needed all that, but God directs me on who to hire. God directs me on which marketing firm to work with. God directs me on, you know, which strategy to utilize for marketing and for, for, for sales and for fulfillment. Like all of that is from God. It's not an idea that I have. I might have an idea. And then when I have an idea, if I don't check with God, like usually that idea doesn't work as well because <laughs> it was my idea. It wasn't, it wasn't God's idea. He knows a lot more than, than I do. I know this for a fact. Fantastic. All right. Now, obviously, looking at you and talking about all the things that you say you now own and possess, some sort of income is coming through. Um, you deleted your database. You're done drinking. You're done with mortgages. You're done with all the coaching. What are you doing now? I am just connecting men to God. Alpha men. That's all I'm doing. And how I'm doing this is offering men to download the Godwalk app on the app store on their cell phone. That is literally what I'm doing. 
when these men actually start walking with God, this is what happens for them. They have a direct guidance directly from God to where God will tell them exactly what steps to take for them to be inside their financial purpose, for them to have their body and health just full of energy and vibrance, and for the relationships at home to be the best they've ever had. When God directs you in those three areas of life and you have an ultimate connection with God, your life will never be the same. Never be the same. That is literally what I'm passionate about today. That's my financial purpose. Fantastic. And how can people get a hold of this um, app? I mean, you downloaded straight from God. Now people can just download from your app. What what would be the best way for people to get in, um, uh, their hands on this app? Yeah, you just go on your app store on your cell phone. You can have an iPhone or an Android. Whatever kind of cell phone you have, you go to your app store and just type in the God Walk app, the T-H-E God Walk app, and literally they can download the God Walk app, and then they will be in direct communication with God. And it's not something that's like pre-recorded to where like you're you're just going to read a bunch of stuff and you're going to learn. You're literally going to go through the training once you download the God Walk app. The training is from me. And what the training is going to show you is how to get into a flow state and how to actually get God to talk directly to you, to give you the coaching that you're looking for in those three, you know, three core areas of life. And as a result, these men are going to be able to lead their families, lead their teams, lead their businesses and control their bodies in in a completely different way because they're not guessing at anything. God is telling them what to do. Fantastic. Now, does this work for just about everybody else or is it something that, um, you know, is uh, left for special kind of men like yourself? It's for anybody that believes there's something bigger than them. That's the requirement. You don't have to be a certain religion. You don't have to have a certain belief other than you have to believe that there's something bigger than you. That's the only requirement. Here's the reason why. If you're walking in the God Walk app and you're asking these questions and you're looking for advice and you don't think it's coming from something bigger than you, then obviously that's not going to work because it's coming from you. Then you should just walk by yourself. You don't need your cell phone. But if you're actually looking for guidance from the universe, from God who created the universe, you download the God Walk app and you start going through the, the questions. It's all prompted. It's all exactly the way that I do it. I do exactly the same God Walk that everyone else does every single day. And as a result, like I said, things change. We also have an exclusive program called the the uh, the Men of God. Um, those individuals that actually log enough God walks, they qualify to be considered to be a part of the Men of God. The Men of God is a direct community that is a very small niche community. I'm not I'm not taking new people on right now. There's not applications or anyone available to apply right now. But as uh, men are walking and in logging their God walk apps. Um, We will be reaching out inside the app to those individuals that we want to consider to be a part of the men of God. And that men of God um, is direct coaching from me for, for a whole 12 months. And there's a community and, 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 and basically what we're doing with the men of God is we're changing the world. So that right there is going to be massive, but that's not something that anyone qualifies at this point. They have to first be walking. They got to be logging their God walks. They've got to have a direct communication and relationship with God on a daily basis before we can talk about that. Fantastic. Does any of this cost any money? Yes, of course it does. It's not cheap. So the actual God Walk app is $399. The God Walk app is going to change your life forever. Here's what you have to realize. For you to be able to have direct communication with God, unlimited direct communication with God, you have to put some skin in the game. You have to make a commitment. If I were to give it to you for free, you're not going to walk with God. You're literally not going to go through the training. The training is inside the app. The God walks are inside the app. The actual God walk logs are inside the app as well. So yeah, absolutely. You're going to have to commit and you're going to have to walk to be able to make this work and be able to change your life. Fantastic. And what sort of um, success stories can you just give us a glimpse of just so that people can know what's inside the niche community? What can they expect and how is this actually going to turn their lives around? Because we've looked at your story where you have come from literally rock bottom and you have, um, you know, uh, 
you know, leveraged yourself um, all the way to the top. Now you're helping other people be doing, have a happier existence. What are those people achieving? Yeah. So I actually had dinner with one of my buddies, Alan here in, uh, in Florida last night. And it was, it was very nice to actually, I hadn't seen him for about four months. So I was talking with him and, and, you know, I'm like, how is, how is, you know, you walking with God and everything else. And he said, it's been amazing. He said, it's been incredible. I said, well, what, you know, what can you, what can you tell me about your businesses? He says, well, the, the one business that I'm working on right now, um, it's a $10 million a year business was not anywhere close to that before. And he says, and he's signing a contract with another company that he's going to become partnerships with, with a $25 million business. That's yearly gross revenue business. And this is all because he's been attracted this in his life because he's walking with God. God is telling him what steps to take. So there's countless stories like this of people that have really changed and elevated themselves to a completely different area or level of life. Because again, he like you have to realize when you're only operating off of information that you have yourself, those are the decisions that you're making is from the information and the influence that has been surrounded on you, whatever coaching you've purchased and you've, and you've been able to attract and, 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 and actually, you know, kept in your, in your mind and be able to utilize, that's all you you're able to make decisions on. But when you go directly to the source of the universe and you're linked up to good and you're like, God, help me out with this. What am I supposed to do? He knows way more than anybody here on this planet. That's why literally the the name of the company is Godspeed because you're operating in Godspeed at that point. Fantastic. Now, obviously we could go on and on, but I think we've covered just about everything that needs to be covered, especially when it comes to um, this subject matter. But Daniel, there's somebody who's watching this show right now. They were trying to fast forward just to get to the part where it, how much it costs and then they're now just sitting there thinking ah it ain't all that um i can just maybe you know take my phone walk into the park and then just sit down and hope to hear some voices maybe i could hear birds or i could hear some people yelling at their kids whatever um what will be that one thing that you could say to somebody who's thinking yes maybe i might need to change my life but maybe Maybe, I, I don't know, they need a little bit more convincing. Yeah, I don't want to convince anyone. Someone like that might not be the person that's going to download the app. Let, let's start with that. Um, here's what I do know, though. For men that want to operate to where they're getting information directly from the source and the creator of the universe, those are the men that I'm looking for to download the app because those are the men they are going to take this for the good and they're going to take the information, they're going to change the world. They're going to make an impact in their neighborhood or their community or their business or their state or their country or their continent. Those are the men that are actually going to change the world are men that are linked up with God. $399 is a joke. Let's be honest. How many times we pay 10 grand for a program or a package? And, you know, those are great programs and packages. But how many times do we get that? And then we we're expecting something different than what we really got. That happens a lot out there. I mean, this industry is, you know, in a nutshell, there's a lot of people that are repackaging and reselling a lot of things. I'm not the coach here. I'm just the man that changes men's life by connecting them directly to God. That's what I tell the man that just fast forwarded to the end. Like if you want to, if you want the real information on how to build your business, your body and your relationship, and if you want to make your wife, happier than she's ever been start working with god directly it works for every single person every single time as long as you go through the training inside the app and you're open for god's direction there you have it gentlemen uh i'm really excited about this episode man and i appreciate the time that you took uh to explain to us exactly what your app does and how it actually works. And as you have noticed, um, you know, the audience, people that are watching this show right now, Daniel not just wakes up every morning with God in a walk and he's told exactly what to do every morning and he takes inspired action in his daily self. And like he has said, if you want to make the relationships, um, you know, the finances, the body and the actual purpose of your life be in alignment, you better start 
um, you know, looking towards getting answers from a higher self that is definitely not you. Daniel, I appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Fantastic.